Hi, this is Farrell Dalrymple. Welcome to my video, my sort of weekly, um, sometimes every other week. Uh, this is, it's been a couple weeks since the last post, the last video, but these are uh, the daily drawings that I've been doing, uh, daily drawings 214 through 227. Um, yeah, in this first one, I've been doing these tarot cards more recently. I'm going to try to do the whole deck. This is the Three of Wands. Um, I kind of put like a, a it will all hurt vibe to this one, sort of like Hawk Daughter, but she's got an owl. I don't know if you can tell from the little drawing, but um, yeah, if you're not already subscribed to my Patreon, if you're just happened on this video on YouTube, um, the way this works is I, I do these daily drawings, but I, I'll do on my Patreon, I'll have a bunch of sketches posted and a list of tarot cards that are still unclaimed. And if you're a member of my Patreon, $2 a month, $4 a month, $8 a month, whatever, you can say, hey, I want that one, or I want that one in the comment section of the, whatever the last post is. And um, then you just, once I do the drawing, you just PayPal me or Venmo or whatever. And then um, I usually explain on my Patreon too. So if you go on my Patreon, you can see it. Uh, this next daily drawing, a friend requested, uh, he's trying to get all the artists that worked on Jenny Finn by Mike McDowell and Troy Nixie, and I did a chapter in there. Uh, he's trying to get all three of us to do a little drawing for it, and there's Troy Nixie's next to mine. So I just decided to include that as a daily drawing just because it was roughly the same size. And um, this next one up, someone asked me to do a Cthulhu drawing, which is a H.P. Lovecraft character, which... Um, seen the first couple episodes of Lovecraft Country, speaking of, and it's pretty great. I like it. Um, so yeah, I've never drawn Cthulhu before, um, but I know I heard he was like public domain because the books are so old at this point. And um, I just kind of went off some of the descriptions that I read in Wikipedia and stuff. And uh, a few days after I did this, I saw Mike Magnolia, one of my heroes, did a Cthulhu that like blew me away and I was like damn it I wish I'd seen that first because <laughs> I liked it so much better but um it's cool I did my little take on it so next one up here is the uh six of cups and I think this is the first one that I penciled because of the cups of the cup suit because someone specifically asked me for the six of cups I guess it was their favorite tarot card so yeah, that's another thing too. If you if you have a favorite tarot card or you want to have like a weird spin on it or something, like someone asked me to have Emily, my character Emily from Popcorn War, as one of the tarot cards too. So I can totally do that. Um, it's in fact I prefer that's fun for me to think about. Oh, cool! I I want this tarot card deck to be sort of like reflect the universe that I create. I guess with my stories, my books, comics, and stuff. Um, a lot of these I've been modeling off the Raider White deck. I think that's the way you pronounce it. And here's a shot of my uh, setup outside. I've, the last few weeks, it's, weather's been so warm. I've just been sitting under a tree. I set a desk up out there. There's a bunch of sketches that I had for the Patreon. This one up here, um, someone asked me to, to do a draw a keyboard, like a happy, ha happy hacker keyboard, which I wasn't familiar with, but um, I guess it's a super low lo-fi you know uh keyboard for that hackers prefer i guess or some hackers <laughs> um so but he also asked me to put like kind of like a mobius style character in there so this is what i came up with just some weird cyberpunky looking robot post-human type thing that was probably my favorite of all the uh ones in this compilation anyway the last few weeks i feel like that was one of the stronger ones I did. This next one here is the uh, King of Pentacles, which I guess in some decks it's also King of Coin or King of Coins. Um, I guess Pentacle is a coin. I don't know. Uh, I, uh, I'm trying to educate myself a little bit about <laughs> this tarot deck stuff. And I guess the when I say traditional decks in these videos, I, I'm referring to the writer weight deck which i guess sometimes is called writer wait coleman or whatever smith deck because uh coleman smith uh, pamela coleman smith i think that's her name I'll, I'll put a little link to her uh in the video description of this and i'm also planning on doing a patreon post about her because um yeah she illustrated the the deck that 
I guess is the most widely used one. Um, and, uh, including, you know, all the ones that I've been doing, I've kind of, not all of them, but most of them have sort of been basing off her, her deck. And, um, and it's, I guess the writer weight are the two dudes that contributed to it or, or came up with the idea. But, um, it seems kind of weird that her name's usually left out of it. And she was like an occultist and illustrator and all this stuff. But like, she did all the hard work, you know, being as like an illustrator myself, who's, you know, worked with writers and stuff, which, you know, is always has like, it's interesting. And, you know, I, I've never worked with like, anyone that I've been upset about working with, it seems like all the writers that I've worked with, it's been, it's been good. But it's like, I usually defer to a, uh, as far as like the heavy lifting goes, I feel like it's like the artist. So, um, like she probably doesn't get as much respect as, uh, I don't know, as she probably deserves, uh, for basically creating that deck, <laughs> you know, with someone else's descriptions, like, you know, she still had to visualize everything and put it on paper. But, uh, this next one, this, this also one, I'm pretty happy with the way this one came out. I've, I've done Hollis a few times. He's from the Wrenchies and, uh, Proxima Centauri pops up and Popgun War, the second volume of Popgun War. Um, but I like the way I just left the background kind of sort of just pencil or some ink and pencil that um, just kind of colored him. And I felt like I, I kind of want to do that more with these, just sort of leave the, leave the background blank and just focus the color on the main character. But I feel like these tarot cards, I don't know, I'm kind of locked into doing a full scene. <laughs> but I noticed that the simpler ones that I do, like this one, for example, I colored this a lot more simply, I think, than some of the other ones. And it came out better. And it seems like that's almost always the case. If I can, if I can get it done quickly, something I'm happy with, I'm generally more happy with it than something that I've spent like a few hours laboring over. I just think it looks better. Um, for whatever reason, but, um, yeah, with this one, I, I kind of did like a wash of yellow over it and I'm just going to start doing that, uh, from now on, you know, first lay down a wash of yellow just to get that all the white area covered up. Um, unless something's like really, really white and I can leave that un untouched or go back in later and do a little white paint, which I don't like doing, but I do it a lot. Uh, this one, for some reason, I don't have a video of. I don't know why, if I just wasn't feeling it that day. But um, there's another tarot deck, obviously, the Four of Wands. And this one, I just, I was being kind of goofy and put all these little weird characters in it. Stuff that, um, yeah, sort of the composition of the Rider weight deck. But, um, yeah, not necessarily the, the figures. Um, this one here is the Five of Wands. I don't know if you can... Just if that's even necessary for me to announce that, because you can see the Roman numeral there. But um, you might notice that some of the numbering on these sequences are different in the pencil sketch, and they are in the finished version, just because I'm kind of shuffling these around as people claim them on my Patreon. I'm like, I'll do the ones first that someone actually, hey, I want that one. It's like, okay, I'll do that before I do the one that hasn't gotten claimed. So they get out of order a little bit, but I'm chipping away on the wands still. I think I have like one or two left wands and then move on to cups. I think that's the next one. And this is another one too that even though it has more characters and it's a little more complicated, I tried to leave the coloring pretty simple. Like any any area that I felt like, oh, I want that to be very light colored. I just, I didn't even touch really. I, I mean, I did like a washy yellow over most of it, but um yeah, I was pretty happy with that, the way that came out. I try to keep the characters in the background a little more, um, pop a little more. I don't know. And there's my cat and the little yard setup that I have. <laughs> it's Pinkson. And there's the finish of that guy. And I'm inking all these with a brush, obviously, you can see in the video. The King of Wands is next here, and um, I think someone specifically requested the King of Wands in advance, too. But the, the type of brush I use, I say it every video and put it in the description, so if you want a link to get your own. Uh, it's a Raphael 8404, number four is the size that I use. And Dr. Martin's Black Star ink, usually matte. Um, Sometimes high carb if, you know, and that's not available. And 
yeah, here's the shot of the pretty much finished in my front yard. Dust set up again there. And uh, yeah, I just watercolor right on top of the uh, the ink. Same thing with the pens that I use the, when I use the pit pens. I just watercolor right on top of that. Uh, this next one was a request. Someone asked me to do a mashup of a giant sloth and a uh, Mothra from uh, the Godzilla franchise. And uh, yeah, this uh, was fun. I just, I like drawing animals. So I just basically did kind of like a, looked at some photos and like maybe what people thought giant sloths looked like. And <laughs> uh you put the slap the Mothra wings and put this little science fiction background. Um, looks nothing like Tokyo or anything, but uh, I don't know. So this is like my own, my own thing. So, uh, and the same fella that got that the Slothra got this uh, Mike Mignola character. Um, well, Guy Davis and John Arcudi also worked on the. Uh, BPRD series, uh, and this guy's called the Black Flame, and he's one of the bad guys on in the series. He, I think there was like a World War Two version of him, and then later there was another ver like a some other guy got became the Black Flame. I think there's maybe been like three of them. Um, it's been a while since I read those comics, but uh, they're really great BPRD, fantastic series, um, great art and uh, good writing. Just super fun, cool cast of characters. And that's the finish. Looks like I left a little bit uninked, a little couple spots just penciled. And uh, speaking of pencil, this uh, a rare glimpse into my <laughs> penciling process here. I'd, I'd drawn this a few days prior and didn't finish it. So when I was going back to ink it, I was like, I don't like the way that line looks. And I decided to add some arms to them. And I kind of got a rough start here. Um, you can see my my lines like really shaky here. I'd, I was wearing uh contacts and it was like kind of hard to focus. So I went back in and tried to fix it up, fix up the edges, and then add those arms in, and just made it a little weirder. And yeah, you know, I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. This is the last one on the video here. Um, if you're interested in getting one of these original artworks, it's only twenty dollars. Um, you got to join my Patreon though. It's uh. Two dollars a month just to join, and um, you get like I do. I try to do like a post, maybe like once a week, once every other week is usually what it comes out to. And I'll have some sketches on there sometimes, and different things I'm into. And Feral Dow is my Instagram. Thanks for watching.